Hey, this is David Plotz, CEO of CityCast. CityCast is hiring a director of finance. And because you're listening to this, I thought you might be a great candidate for the job, or you might know a great candidate for the job. CityCast is a national network of daily local podcasts and newsletters. And as our director of finance, you would develop our finance strategy and lead finance and accounting. CityCast is growing super fast, and we are changing local media in the U.S. And as our first finance director, you'd work directly with me to make CityCast an amazing and innovative and fiscally sound business. The job is remote. You could be anywhere in the U.S., and we're offering a competitive salary, great benefits, and a fantastic set of colleagues. Plus, we're part of a very stable parent company. So if you're interested, please apply. Go to citycast.fm slash jobs for more information. That's citycast.fm slash jobs. Today on CityCast DC. You might not think of D.C. as a city where you need to watch out for snakes, but multiple snake sightings in the city dispel that notion. It might sound a little scary for some, but not for wildlife educator Caroline Seitz. She loves our scaly, slithery friends and joins us to explain what types are in the area and what you should do if you see one. Today's Wednesday, March 27th. I'm Bridget Todd, and here's what DC is talking about. Hi, Caroline. Thank you so much for being here today. Hi, Bridget. Thanks so much for having me. I'm super excited. So when we were prepping for this interview, my producer, Julia, was like, do you hate snakes? Are you afraid of snakes? And I was like... Not any more than is normal to feel about snakes. I mean, like, I feel like most people don't love the idea of a snake where a snake ought not be or maybe where you're not expecting one. So I think of this as sort of service journalism, you know, news you could use if you're someone like me who doesn't really want to encounter a surprise snake. Absolutely. I mean, I think you're completely like in the norm. (laughs) The majority of people that I meet and talk to don't feel the same way about snakes that I feel. (laughs) So for the last few years, snakes have kind of been blowing up all over the internet, specifically in DC. Somebody found a five foot long black eastern rat snake in Georgetown. Um, Another snake was found like slithering up on a window in Logan Circle. There was one that was trying to Cross Connecticut Avenue using a crosswalk, might oh, I add. You well, know, good just, for the snake. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good pedestrian, <laughs> even not having feet. Um, right. <laughs> so particularly in, D- in D.C., are there actually a lot of snakes in the D.C. area or is it more of a seasonal thing? Like we're in snake season. Yes to all of those questions. We're in the height of snake season and Washington, D.C. area has about 15 different snakes species or different kinds of snakes, kind of give or take. But yeah, I mean, you can go out and see snakes throughout the DMV. What are some of the most common snakes in the area? Well, probably the most commonly seen snake is the Decay's brown snake. It's kind of a little cutie patootie snake. It gets about a foot long and it's completely harmless. It can't hurt you. It can't hurt your pets. It eats slugs and worms and um, people see them and they almost always misidentify them as copperheads, which are our only venomous snake here in the immediate DC area. But so yeah, the Northern or Decay's brown snake. And when I was a little girl, that was the very first snake that I ever picked up. (laughs) I have to ask, like, you clearly are somebody who, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, likes snakes. Yep, you can definitely put those words right in my mouth. I love snakes. And I unlike a lot of people, have loved snakes my whole life. I can't ever remember a time when I was afraid of them. So you mentioned that most people, if they saw like a harmless D.C. area snake, they might misidentify it as a snake that's actually harmful. Does D.C. have snakes that could actually be dangerous? Yeah, so there is one. It's the copperhead. Um, Compared to, say, the Decay's brown snake or the garter snake or the eastern black rat snake or the northern water snake, it's less commonly encountered. But they are here. They're in the city. Um, Rock Creek Park and even some other parts of the city have found confirmed copperheads. Um, But copperheads, like all snakes, are afraid of humans. Even though they're venomous, they have fangs and poison that can hurt, you know, if, if they bite. They actually, they don't want to bite. Their venom is actually to help them get food. 
you know, remember snakes don't have like hands, so it's hard for them to eat. <laughs> so the venomous snakes have that venom so that their food doesn't fight back when they're eating it. They are afraid of people. If you leave copperheads alone, they'll leave you alone. And that's true for all snakes. They're scared of people. They think of people as like giant, scary Jurassic Park dinosaurs. And just like you wouldn't want to chase after a T-Rex. Snakes, they don't want to chase you. They don't want anything to do with you. They just want to live their happy little snake lives in peace. Do you find yourself having to correct the record about snakes often where it's like, no, actually, you don't have to be afraid of a lot of snakes because they're just trying to like do their snake thing. They don't want to hurt you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I talk to people all the time who are genuinely afraid of snakes. There's so much misinformation out there. There's so many movies and TV shows and well, things on the internet, for instance, that make snakes seem so scary. And really, I mean, a snake is just a wild animal that is just so afraid of people. I can't explain. Like, like when I'm out hiking and I see a snake, if I want to try and get a picture of it, I have to be really careful to not scare the snake. <laughs> you know, people are always like, oh, you have to be careful when you're around a snake. Well, you have to be careful because if you get too close to a snake, usually they go away, they slither away. Sometimes if you get too close to a snake, they'll freeze because they hope that you won't see them because of their camouflage. They're hoping that if they just don't move, that you will just not see them and move along. But if you get really too close to a snake and you try to touch it or bother it, you know, snakes can't talk. So the snake isn't gonna say, excuse me, giant scary human, will you please leave me alone? The only way they have to defend themselves if they're harassed by a human is to bite. They can't punch you, they can't scratch you, they can't yell at you, they can't call on their phone, just call 911 and say, there's a human attacking me. Um, so if you just leave snakes alone, they'll leave you alone too, it really is true. So give us your best do's and don'ts for when you spot a snake. Like let's say it's like chilling in your house and you see a snake just like, doing its snake thing, but it's doing it in your home. What do you do? Chilling snake thing in your home. Now that's, oh boy, we can talk for a long time. So I'll try, I'll try to make this uh, short as I can. So if there's a snake that's in your home, you probably don't want it inside your home. It's a wild creature in your home. So the first thing to do is realize it's all going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Uh, but if it's near a door that leads to the outside, open the door, you know, try not to scare the snake further into your house, but open the door, get a long handled broom and sweep the snake out the door and then shut the door. <laughs> if the snake is not near a door, if you're comfortable, you could try placing a large box or a bucket over the snake, but you want to keep your body at least the same length of the snake's body away chances are the snake that's in your house is not venomous, okay? But hey, it could be, so let's be safe. Try to keep at least the length of the snake's body away. And I'll just say, for instance, six feet away from the snake and then try and place a box or a bucket over top of it and then put a brick on top of it and then call, um, like animal control might come if it's contained. There are also licensed wildlife removal companies that specialize in snakes. They can come. But if a snake is just randomly loose in your house and you don't know where it is, then you're going to have to call one of those licensed wildlife removal technician specialty people. Can snakes get into your walls through like crevices or holes? Yep, yep. So basically snakes, they like to be cozy. You know how people like weighted blankets to make them feel all tucked in and safe? Snakes love that feeling. <laughs> like snakes crave cozy. Um, so when they're moving along, they're just kind of nosing in their head, little heads. And you know, snakes have bones. They're vertebrate animals, just like human beings. They have a skull, they have a backbone, they have ribs, but they are a little bit more flexible. They're really good at like yoga kind of moves, you know. They can stick their little head into things and they can get into the smallest spaces. I have found them inside of ovens. Definitely in walls, in cracks and crevices, in foundations, you know, at the smallest little spot, they'll just try and tuck themselves in. And people ask, well, why? Why do they do that? Again, snakes like to be cozy. So when they find a small little spot, they'll just kind of go right in there to hide. I never knew I had so much in common with snakes. <laughs>
Black Cat is a DC icon, and I spent a bunch of my 20s there. These days, it is still rocking and features artists from every genre. Many of them you would be hard pressed to find anywhere else, really. Like Twin Tribes, a self-described dark wave duo that features lyrics about the occult and parallel universes. They're coming to town on April 4th. Where else are you going to see that? Or you could check out Echo Astral on April 5th, a new DC-born queer punk band that pioneered what they call mascara mosh pit music. I don't even know what that means. You probably don't either, but I want you to find out. You with me? Also, March 28th, girls' school. Yeah, right. Here's what you do. Go to blackcatdc.com for tickets and the venue's full schedule. Once again, that's blackcatdc.com. Have fun out there. So if you do see a snake in your house, what are some signs that maybe you should be concerned? Maybe it's not a harmless snake. Maybe it's something to really be a little bit concerned about. Well, I'll be honest. If you find a snake inside your house, you probably want to be concerned in general, because if a snake can get in there, then other critters that can actually be a little bit more destructive might get into your house like mice. Um, every animal has its place, but I like to say generally out, outside, right? <laughs> I mean, even, even though I love snakes and wildlife, I actually don't want snakes and wildlife inside my house. Um, rodents like mice and rats and um, squirrels, they can actually be pretty destructive, like chewing on electrical wiring and causing house fires. If a snake is in your house, chances are there, there could be rodents and other more destructive critters there too. Snakes, by the way, they, they actually can't really do anything to hurt your home the way rodents could. So what I would suggest doing is an inspection of your home from top to bottom, starting in the attic and then working your way all the way to the crawl space with like a pencil and a flashlight. Any space you can stick a pencil through, you're gonna need to seal up. And any place that you can see light like shining through in your attic, you wanna make sure that it's either covered with wire mesh or that it's sealed up properly. And sometimes you'll have to hire an expert to do that kind of an inspection and then do the repairs. And again, if, if you see a snake that's in your house and it's right there in front of you, unless you're a snake nerd expert person like I am, you really don't want to touch any snakes unless you're 100 percent positive in the identification. And most people are really just not great at snake ID. And hey, hey, I get it. I'm terrible at IDing cars. When I'm waiting for my, you know, ride share car to pick me up, I'm like, I don't know what a Honda looks like. They all the cars, they look the same. Most people snakes, they all just it's a snake, you know. Um, so if you see one, don't touch it with your hands. If you can use a long handled broom, sweep it out. If you can get it contained in a box, call an animal control company. Otherwise, you'll need to just call in an expert. Do you have any guidance for if folks encounter snakes like out in the wild? Oh, yeah, that one's easy. That one's easy peasy. Nothing. Hey, if you see a snake <laughs> in the wild, great. That's it. Go about, your, go about your life. <laughs> right, exactly. Snake, go about its life. You go about your life. Everyone's happy. If you've got a camera, take a picture. Snakes are beautiful. Um, here in the D.C. area, we have snakes that are so many different colors, like yellow of the garter snake, green of the green snake. <laughs> brown of the brown snake, black of the black rat snake. Um, Hognose snakes come in every color. They can be like bright orange and yellow all the way to jet black. We have snakes that are mahogany red, like the northern water snake and the milk snake. Man, we've got so many beautiful snakes in this area. Who knew there were so many snakes <laughs> in the D.C. area? Car Caroline, I have to ask, do you have a pet snake or like any pet critters of the like <laughs> so i have a kitty cat named trucky <laughs> but no i i actually really enjoy seeing snakes out in the wild and i think snakes enjoy seeing themselves out in the wild i think that they're a lot happier slithering around in the woods or even in my backyard i will say that in my garden i have a compost pile and there are resident snakes that live there and and even lay their eggs and i always get so excited every summer um, but i like to let them live free and be happy living their own snake lives. I'm glad that the snakes have an advocate and a, you know, a spokeshuman in yes. you, Caroline. <laughs> Thank you. If folks want to learn more about snakes in the area, where can they go? 
So there's some great places. Of course, I um, am here as the representative of the Virginia Herpetological Society. Um, We are a society dedicated to the conservation, the research, and education of Virginia wild herpetology. And herpetology is the fancy word for reptiles and amphibians, or the study of. We offer all kinds of education programs, and we do field surveys that are kind of like citizen science, where members of all ages ages, including children, can come out. We go out into the field. We collect data on native species. We're tracking, you know, how many animals there are. Where are they? Yeah. So the Virginia Herpetological Society also has a website and we can do identification. So if you are out, say, hiking and you see a snake or there's a snake in your house and you get a picture of it, you can email it to us and we can give you an identification, a positive ID on exactly what kind of animal you're looking at. Do you have a favorite snake that exists here in the area? Ooh, that's a toughie. So I love them all. I have a very soft spot for the brown snake. I love garter snakes. I think they're gorgeous. And I love it when they flatten up because they're scared. So I guess I don't really love it because it means that they're scared and then I feel bad for them. But they look so like tough but beautiful. Um, I also have a really soft spot for the northern water snake because everybody, when they see them, they think they're either copperheads or cottonmouth water moccasins, which we don't even have anywhere near here. You have to go all the way down to um, the southeastern part of the state of Virginia to find those guys. And then... I'm just going to go along with the trend of all the local herpetologists and say probably my most favorite D.C. area snake. And you all who are reptile people, you already know what I'm going to say. Eastern hognose snake. I know. Yep, that's it. (laughs) Eastern hognose snake. And you might ask, why the hognose snake? Well, for the reptile people out there, you know why. So the first thing is these guys are adorable and they come in like all the different colors. They have a cute little upturned snout. And here's the best part, when they get scared, the Eastern hognose snake will actually flip over on its back, so its belly side up. It will open up its mouth and hang out its tongue, it will go to the bathroom all over itself so it smells bad, and it plays dead. And if you gently roll it over onto its belly, it flips right back over because The snake must be thinking, oh, no, 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 I'm dead. So I must be laying on my back now because a dead snake has to be on its back. I don't know what the hognose snake is thinking. And if you go and hide, the hognose snake will slowly look around for you. And if it doesn't see you, it'll roll back on its belly and then start sliding away. And then if you kind of jump out from the bush, it'll flip right back over. It's pretty cute. That sounds adorable. We will keep (laughs) on the lookout for the hognose snake. It sounds incredible. I got to end by saying my least favorite snake in the D.C. area, my ex. Oh, (laughs) good one. Snake humor, snake humor. (laughs) I like it. (laughs) (laughs) Caroline, thank you so much for being here. This has been a pleasure. I have loved this. Thank you so much. (laughs) Yeah, you got to say it the snake way. You got to. The snake way. The snake way. That's all for today here on CityCast DC. If you enjoyed the show, share it with your friend with a major snake phobia. We'll be back tomorrow morning with even more news from around the city. Talk to you then. They hiss like a cobra. Oh, I just scared my kitty. Sorry. (laughs)